my name is Jorge and uh, now can you hear me? yeah so <clears throat> hi again my name is Jorge and uh, I'm gonna talk to you today so I am a research chair and lecturer at Professor Hoverstadt's chair <clears throat> in I've been there, I finished my PhD there and what I would, like, I would like to talk to you about today is I want, to show, I want to show you, I want to talk about my work, about my interest, about my research, about what uh, uh, makes me happy <laughs> and what doesn't. So I, I got a, I'm an architect, so I got a diploma in architecture and before coming here so i was doing things like uh, like this this is over like 10 12 years ago Let me see these things. so small practice uh, big team designing building <laughs> it was okay at the moment but then i got curious about uh, computers i always liked computers and I, at the moment, this uh, parametric system was kind of a hype, so then I thought, okay, how, how are these uh, uh, programming, scripting things influencing architecture now? So then I went back to school and I did a postgraduate uh, studies. And then there I got introduced to, to uh, Internet of Things, to programming, to a little bit of robotics. Uh, a grasshopper and all this kind of stuff uh, and then I continued here at ETH with this MIS, this uh, Master in Advanced Studies uh, very similar story interactive installations and there I got uh, and here is when I got kind of uh, what is still my interest in in in, uh, in architecture. So I think at the very beginning of my trip, of my PhD, it was uh, Tumblr. So I always I have always been fascinated by by having a lot and being able to play with it, not knowing what it is, and kind of juggle it. So I think this content share platform was a very good start for me. They have uh, uh, millions of blogs and then uh, billions of posts, and then it's just running, running, running. So then uh, I started to, to to just to crawl to source. I think you have you have seen this at this class, I guess. Few lines of code, you start uh, uh, getting things from the server, from Tumblr server. So then very fast. I started just to collect things of the blogs that I liked and in, in, in a few minutes, in one day, then I had uh, 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 thousands of images. And okay, but it's a lot what I'm not going like this and check what's there one by one. So uh, then I said, okay, maybe there's a way to programmatically start grasping at all of these things without me going into details. So this is and then this is how, for example, one post would look like on Tumblr, and then the other one is how programmatically you get information from, from a server. And it's okay, I have 1,000 uh, blocks. What are they talking about? So with these uh, uh, machine intelligence algorithms that you have been discussing in this class, so very fast, I just said, uh, I characterize the post by the metadata, by the tag, and then by, by the description that people uh, add on it and by the blog's own description. So by all the things around the image, I characterize all the images by the things that are around them. And then this is kind of a map, a two-dimensional map of what is there in, uh, in uh, thousands of posts. And then if I take kind of a small sample, so if I take of this C shape, at that time if I took like small sample, top right corner, then I, I, will, I will see this kind of post and they seem to be talking about architecture without me knowing that it was architecture, without me saying I want architecture. And similar story, if I 
take these ones from the from the bottom right part, this kind of cost would appear. So this was kind of interesting because so fast I could just do like this. And I said, okay, now that that I know where architecture is and I know where art, contemporary art is, so what what else can I do? Uh, so then I, I start saying, okay, what, what's, what would be a normal talk of architecture in Tumblr's terms? So with these algorithms, I started uh, to, look, to look at what are they talking about, what kind of hashtag, what kind of descriptions, and define what's normal for them, how many uh, likes, how many reblogs, re re and uh, likewise on the other, on, on the art side post. So, some sort of a, some sort of normality kind of was described and then since the posts are coming and coming and coming i was always measuring and taking the new ones and say okay is this new one part of the normal or is this kind of uh, extraordinary post in these terms are they to are, is this post talking about what all the posts are usually talking about if, uh, if yes, I would just add it to the collection. If not, I would say, okay, this is then an extraordinary post. So then put it in another blog, something like this. So uh, in, the, in this way, I was able to, to, def to, to define what, what they are talking about and the other way being attentive of the newness, of the new things that are, were popping up. And then I said, okay, uh, if I make a search on Tumblr search engine, if I say, if I say for example, what uh, a labyrinth is, so this kind of tells me what the community thinks that a labyrinth is. And so it is very similar story. If you go to a, to a web search engine, if you ask for a labyrinth, labyrinth, it will tell you what the search engine think that you may think the labyrinth is. So then I said, okay, but this is not a labyrinth for me. I said, okay, maybe, maybe I can, I can uh, uh, characterize my own concepts. I can say what a labyrinth means, it's, it's, uh, what labyrinth means to me. So then I made a collection of posts and I said, okay, all these things kind of are around index a concept of labyrinth from my understanding. So similar story, I said, okay, if this is what I want, if this is what is important for me at the moment, and I look at the stream of data, I start picking up the things that are closer to this uh, uh, to this concept that I just defined by myself. And this also part part of this uh, this last one of with the labyrinth was part of a workshop uh, on storytelling by images. So on the one hand, this uh, this kind of blog was constantly informing a group of students, and on the other hand. Uh, we were teaching, we were telling stories about a little bit of techniques of how to deal with the images, how to make collages, how to manipulate them. So the goal of this small workshop, as its name suggests, is to tell a story through the images that you have constantly coming and through you as a personal gesture, taking some, cutting them, placing, placing them in certain, within certain constellations. So this is just, uh, part of the presentation of the workshop. And this was aiming at uh, having a new image, pretty much informed by this uh, stream of posts by Tumblr. So then students were supposed to do nice things like this. And then, uh, uh, so then from, from, from uh, let's say philosophical part, if you say, okay, there are so many images and you can say whatever you want about these images and you can characterize them however you want. What is it that we see in a picture, in, an, in, in a picture, in a painting or in an image? And I'm, and, and I'm at the moment working with, uh, and, and how I am addressing these images is with this kind of cutting edge machine intelligence algorithms. So then, if I ask to the most prominent machine intelligent algorithm now, this Watson, IBM Watson, if I ask what, 
Watson sees in Las Medinas, Watson would tell me, okay, there's a little, it is, this image is about a little theater with, uh, with uh, uh, female figures age 35 and 44. So this is a web app, you can just Google it, IBM uh, uh, Watson, you can upload any image and it will tell you what Watson sees in this image. But then if you ask the same question to, in this case, to, to, to Foucault, he will tell you that he sees in Las Meninas something that it's not there. So he will, he will challenge, uh, he will challenge the, the common grounds at that point when the painting was done. He would challenge the common grounds of, of, uh, of uh, value of the piece of art value. So I don't, you, ha you can, you can uh, it's the first chapter of this book, you can, you can re read it or read it. So then uh, somehow both of them, they are kind of identifying objects. So Watson is seeing faces, he's seeing elements in it. But then this philosophical take, it's all also identifying uh, La Infanta, it's identifying the painter, it's identifying the frame. But then the story that he's telling is, uh, is about uh, how these things are placed in relation and how this relation, it was new at the time. You can read it very fast, but it's very powerful. So you can agree with both of them actually, but my take, what, I, what I'm most inter interested in as an architect is this kind of narratives, the narratives that uh, that are about putting things in certain constellation, putting things together and telling powerful, consistent stories. Uh, I can also tell you uh, uh, on Tumblr, for, uh, still talking about uh, this content sharing platform, I can also tell you a story of, uh, of privacy. <laughs> so this is already kind of a, uh, pretty much discussed uh, with Cambridge Analytica and all these kind of uh, episodes where this technology is kind of uh, disrupting some status, uh, disrupting the way we trust in, 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 in democracy, let's say. And this happens so that you know what is it about now, Facebook and then Facebook having uh, Facebook modeling all of us and by that kind of targeting uh, influencing, uh, putting in our faces what things that may influence our decisions because this kind of communities, Facebook knows who we are, what we like, who are our friends, where do we live. Uh, so more or less uh, uh, taking, taking something out of this, I said, okay, what if, what if I make a, a small prototype with this Tumblr that kind of claims a new kind of privacy. So it's supposed to be a raspberry, it's a raspberry Pi. So this thing like this, and it's supposed to, you're supposed to get into one packet, to plug it to the internet, to the, to the power, to start saying what you like, what you don't like, and then just wait. So how, how more or less does it work? If these communities know everything about us, so let's say that we just like everything and we just follow everyone and we say that everything is fine. Something like uh, we become noise for this kind of communities, for this kind of uh, uh, very created algorithms, very personalized algorithms. So if someone from the outside is looking at us, so they would say, but this guy likes everything. This guy uh, is friends of everyone. Where to put him? So it's kind of the gesture. So gaining privacy by becoming noise. So then uh, privately in your home, the idea is if you have this Raspberry Pi and to the outside, it is constantly, it behaves like noise. In your house, it knows what you like. You are telling, you, you, you are instructing what may be interesting for you. And it's putting certain stories uh, daily stories based on this personal private interest. So you have uh, many days, many little machines 
the stream of data is always coming, you're always like noise and privately you get certain consistent, maybe interesting stuff. Uh, <coughs> This is these uh, these lines of code with which you can just start making questions to the server and start to retrieving some information. So it's it's uh, some data. It can they can be also uh, implemented to Wikipedia to Wikimedia Commons, and this is what uh, what I did what we did in this in this experiment. So the the collection Google Man, twenty five hundred little images that were just scanned in high definition and uh, they look like this some characters some la landscape architecture and so on and also by all this metadata but by how in this case wikimedia is describing these images so then we just place it in a navigable space so then uh, you switch both buttons in the computer and then they the whole, the, all the image start to transform and start to move according to how is it that you want to look at it. Or just flatten it and then uh, just place them once in a map where the things that the portraits are together and then the, uh, the figures that are upright figures, all this landscape, and then somehow instead of on a web browser having these Wikimedia Commons with 10 pages and then you click and you see it then you say okay this is all of them at once uh, so then so then you have these these uh, these images and you are turning it to turning them all according to what you well according to your intuition maybe and what, ha what happens is that uh, that as, as, as many times you are turning it, many different neighborhoods start to appear because they, they start to move all around because the questions are different. The, 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 the data is the same, the images are the same, but we are all looking at it in, in a different way. And what's interesting is so that you have these neighbors and then you say, okay, let's follow one image, let's follow one guy. So this homeless guy, then if we turn it in four different ways, he has different neighbors, he has different friends in any way that you turn it. And somehow they they are, it, it's okay, you know, they are, they are, uh, uh, they, this guy belongs to different categories and he fits in all these categories. So it's kind of fine. And thinking about, about this, about how is it that you characterize uh, something. So there's a very, there's a very interesting uh, uh, view on philosophical, philosophical, philosophical position on how is it that everyone relate, is connected to everyone in a level of information. How is it that we, that everything, every object of the world uh, emits and receives and stores and processes information? So this is one specific take uh, on, on Ser and on his book. I mean, I think he develops this through many, many books, but in his book, The Parasite, he's specifically talking about this. He's saying, okay, if all of us in a way or in another are always influencing, are informing our decisions, uh, what do, what what kind of what what does it what does it mean for a community? So you have uh, so he, he starts the book he starts the book with uh, with a very short story about uh, a rat. The book is called the Parasite, and the very first story is about uh, a rat. Uh, from the countryside who is invited for dinner from a city rat. So then the city rat says, okay, friend, you are from the countryside, come to my house, we have very different food, let's eat together. And then the, 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 the countryside rat comes to the city and the city rat lives in the, in the tax collector's house. So then the tax collector 
has all these uh, uh, good from the field, uh, vegetables and, and, and so on. And then he eats leftovers, he leaves and then the rats come. So the countryside rat becomes the parasite of the city rat, who in turn is the parasite of, of the tax collector, who in turn is the parasite of the land in certain way. So then this guy le leaves, the tax collector leaves, he gets a phone call or whatever from the city mayor and then these guys are eating and this rat makes so much noise that they interrupt whatever it is that, uh, that the tax collector is doing. So then the moment of being the parasite shifts. So the guys are not the parasite, the rats are not the parasite of the city collector, but the city collector is the parasite of the rats. In the sense that they are interrupting what is it that they are doing, which is eating. So, so this, kind, this kind of uh, interplay, this kind of change of relations and of relations between all of us is what is being developed in this book. And somehow it kind of resonates so on, on uh, if we think about it and we look at let's say, strong stories around. So this very famous with David in Goliath, I think uh, Gladwell tells the story very often. So uh, you have David, you have Goliath, you have both are represent their own people and then they are supposed to fight to settle something. And Goliath, of course, is the, is the most physically apt. And then he laughs at David. Well, then uh, one stone, two stones, that's it. So then, it's uh, this is the, the the first take. No, who is the victim is 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 very clear. But who was supposed to be the victim is very clear. But can we think that that Goliath was the victim here? Because if we look at David a little bit more, you see that he's a, 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 a shepherd, and then he's just after the animals, and he has all the time of the world to work with this to to play with this with this tool. So many years, many hours, he's just doing like this while the ships are like this. So this tool, this weapon became part of himself. So can we think, for example, that Goliath had no chance against him, that, that uh, he was too good, he was too good, not in, a physical, not in a physical level, in a fighting level, but with this weapon, there was no other way but how it happened. So turning a little bit. And this with many other characters, not fictitious, uh, uh, fictitious or, or, or real. So of course you can, you can always condemn and you say this is whatever a character can do is wrong. And there is no question about it. But then for example, uh, Adam Curtis in this documentary kind of suggests that he was the victim of something else for example. So I'm, I'm just talking about the relation between, between uh, uh, elements and how this relation is always changing and kind of projected to the world online, you know, with these communities and then with uh, content sharing platforms and all this abundance, this plentiness that, we are talk that you are talking about a lot in the course. So then if we say, okay, uh, one character can be described at infinitum, we can always turn it, we can always add things this apply, they would apply also to, for example, definitions of architecture. So each one has a, its own definition of architecture and somehow they are all okay. I mean, we don't have to agree with all of them, but always you are now creating your own definition and in five years when you're done with this, it would be different, hopefully. So, so then trying to, to think about it and to relate it to, to this plentiness this small exercise was about uh, these two different worlds, let's say, and how they can uh, talk to each other. If both of them are constantly ch changing, if I as a character am constantly changing, if my interests are constantly changing, and definitions of architecture are constantly changing, can these, with these algorithms, can we still make them make, uh, find some cross points or some moments when we can start talking to each other. So on the one hand, then uh, I sourced all these Swiss architects 
Swissarchitects.com, uh, uh, Swissarchitects.com, uh, and then uh, downloaded all the profiles of all the offices. As you know, if someone is building something in Switzerland, is profiled in this website, in this platform. So all the text, all the images, and on the other hand, uh, a character from a TV series uh, uh, from Mr. Robot. So then uh, I source everything that is said by him or about him. So we have this kind of two always changing, uh, 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 always changing different objects. So then, uh, since it's at the level of text of what Mr. Robot is saying and what the architects are, how the architects are articulating their own work or their philosophy. So then, as you have done it probably already, so we start counting words and then we see, we see that uh, Elliot's vocabulary is something like, uh, like this. We have persons, see, just know. Architects, of course, are talking about building, houses, space, residential, room, floor, design. and in order to compare them, we kind of make a common ground. And in this case, the common ground are topics. So then these topics are being built based on the vocabulary. So for example, the topics of Swiss architects is big project design. It would be one topic. The other topic would be competition price plan. And uh, likewise with, uh, with Elliot. So then these are all the offices three different colors, three different ways to turn the same, uh, the same text. And again, this, uh, these neighborhoods start to change. So in this case, uh, Schwarz Schwarz has different neighbors. If we are talking about a uh, one specific model, maybe we're talking about other specific model, it has different neighbors. And then we just place the character. I mean, in this case, the character, but it can be you, you know, if so which one would be the most interesting office for you to work with in a few years, for example. So Elliot, he's just a tech. So who is kind of, who can be friends of him? Who are, which architectural office is talking about the same things, is interested in the same things? And then we see, for example, uh, uh, what is it? Jomini Zimmerman, the architecture is always also a social project or our goal is to create innovative architecture that respects both the needs of the people as well as the local context. If you want to build according to everyone's advice, get a house, the crooked city. I think this is a, a trans Google trans uh, Yandex, Yandex translate uh, uh, mistake. But the thing is that if you know uh, Elliot, I don't know if you know him, but he's kind of an anarchist that is trying to destroy the system through the digital infrastructure. So there's no kind of book of Elliot with which to compare these results. But if you see that these offices are talking about social projects, about the needs of people, about the crooked city, so then you may say, yeah, it kind of makes sense. I kind of sympathize with these results. And I think this is kind of a, a, a very, present important question in this, with these algorithms, with this machine intelligence, because what happens when one single translation, for example, of, uh, of one sentence can have like 10 valid translations, or when you make a search engine, so it's really you who is deciding uh, where, what is it, is you who is putting the, 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 the is you who, who says what is it that you're looking for and not the search engine, for example. Or when you crawl, will you use the Instagram uh, suggestion tools as well? So you may like one out of 10 and it's, you don't have to like them all. So this kind of bring these moments of evaluation for me to a level of, of, uh, of sympathy and so in, actually in the same book, so Foucault argues that, uh, that sympathy was kind of a mode in the uh, beginning of the Baroque, it was kind of a, a mode to, uh, to, to make, uh, to construct knowledge. 
so that through sympathy we can learn things and he, here he says something like and here at the level of sympathy no path has been determined in advance no distance laid down no links prescribed sympathy plays through the depth of the universe in freestyle and it kind of feels like uh, our world a little bit today if you don't like the first suggestion you go to the second something like this uh, I want to <clears throat> I want to show you now what I'm currently working on I think I'm very fast uh, so, I'm, I'm, so I have this class that said the three movie scenes machine learning architecture and here we are dealing with films with movies with tons of them and what I'm trying to to, to share with with you with the students is okay uh, we have this uh, uh, notebooks like Wolfram that you have now but now with Jupiter and let and say okay let's look at them as instruments so let's learn to play it and let's uh, let's experiment what kind of things we can we can uh, play with them what kind of music so we have movies movie files and then we start to to, to work we transform into clips we start to extract relevant clips or images out of the movies, or, or text, so the subtitles, or and then we start to plot them with a similar goal to see what's next, what's uh, similar to each other, and how we want to turn it. We make gifs for fun and uh, maps. We uh, recognize uh, scenes if they are indoors, outdoors. We make queries, we ask questions to all these movies. We make uh, image questions as well. And these from around, at this point, uh, 200 movies. So Jupiter instead of Mathematica, Python 2. And then some, probably some concepts, some uh, uh, buzzwords that you can for your Google, scene recognition, Fourier transformation, Dimension, dimensionality reduction, tuple modeling, scene classification, clustering. So this course is about the instruments and this abundance of film. So now I want to 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 show you a little bit to go very fast to what we do in the course. So a little bit performative. So this is. Uh, this is Jupyter Notebook, this is Python, and it's different from Mathematica in, in many sense, in many ways, but uh, what I find very s strong similarities, and this is why I think it's also very good for education to get the sense how it works, is these cells, and then things are, are you can run things individually, and, uh, and uh, you can make notes, hyperlinks, images, videos, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so it's something like this now. So you just say, in one line you can print stuff, or you can uh, make iterations. So count 10, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And I think one of the differences here one of the many different also another important difference is that here you're kind of saying what is it that you want to do and with Mathematica you're kind of turning the question you're saying I want this I don't care how you get it but in one line you say I want this like this like that and here with Python you kind of think in advance the path to get what is it that you want uh, another very important difference is that Jupyter, uh, that the Python is uh, open source, and then Mathematica is proprietary, of course. So all the development comes from one single entity. Uh, uh, in Mathematica and Python is kind of a whole community, but the whole community is kind of very robust and is very engaged. So things are 
constantly being updated, more things are, are many things are do very, very well documented. And uh, yeah, something like this. So for example, <clears throat> talking about the films, about this course, uh, so you have, we have uh, one movie, one movie clip, 500 megabytes. It's not very loud. Sorry, just a second. There will be problem. I want you to delete any correspondence between Kishimi and Chester and everything, emails, texts, phone logs, any record of this meeting. Okay, it's not super important, the sound, but it's good to have it there. So, so you have one, one file that is around half an hour. So then we... <clears throat> We import one of these libraries that someone in the community already put together. In this case, this one is in detect, is in detection, and then this is the document, very well documented. And then what it does is it just reads frame by frame and uh, calculates the mean pixel intensity. And whenever it's very high, then it means it it it, it considers this like a switch of camera, for example. So we, we define variables, uh, we define uh, objects within this library, and then we say, okay, uh, take the film, take the movie file, start look at each frame and start to calculate the mean pixel and tell me when there's a difference and consider that as a scene change, a change of scene. So it just takes it and then starts uh, takes a few seconds. So you have so then you ask this within this library and then you get back these timestamps and it's okay there are fifty six of these scenes and mean a second and zero zero second one and so on. So to continue with this uh, uh, what we want which is just instead of having one clip we want several clips when the camera is moving so we get the timestamps and then we just partition this clip into these many clips so then instead of having one now we have 118 and then if we play a few of them There, change of scene. So then you can see how the file is different. So it's it's, it's finally in. So it's not this abrupt. So it's kind of, it considers kind of the same. And again, there it, the scene changes, and so on and so forth. So then we can do the same with similar stuff with the subtitles. So if I show you subtitle, the subtitles of this file the, of this. Uh, 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 oops, chapter. They look like this. They are actually already discrete. So it has a, an index, a time, a time lapse, and then uh, uh, the, the the lines themselves. So then we want to import them to our notebook, so we can start playing with them. So somebody, someone already within the community uh, did this. So pi. SRT, we import the library and then we import the file. So then now we have here the same as the same as the SRT file. Now we have it in our notebook. And we start to look at uh, how uh, what's the time the time between uh, line and line, between subtitle and subtitle. So we can consider a median like a scene change. So if uh, this, this means that, for example, if the camera is kind of uh, jumping around, but there's the same dialogue, then it's considered as being part of the same scene. 
so then we index all the, the beginning all the beginnings and uh, we do the same we compare it to this previous discretization of the clips we put it next to the discretization uh, uh, of the subtitles and then we kind of tune and get rid and get uh, a more fine in a way uh, change of scenes and again we just uh, uh, take the clip again and then we split it and then <clears throat> So that now that they are talking, but the camera is moving, so it's considered one still because they are still engaged in the same uh, in the same uh, dialogue. So <clears throat> we have the clips, but then we want to have JPEG files, like image files, so we can start operating as well. So we have all the timestamps, and then we say just just save the J a jpeg open the file start counting and when it is a change of scene then save a jpeg and this is basically what's going on here so this is the first frame of each scene so you see they are consistent uh, consistently different And similarly, we, we save the scene, not as an image, not as a, as a clip, but as text. So for example, the scene 14, so the scene 40, Just to show you what it means, uh, or let's say the scene 27, don't, I have to go, I'm meeting a client soon, perhaps we could have dinner one night. So this is its clip. So we have a scene as an image, as a clip, as a text. Okay. So now we have many frames and then we want to start to play with them as this post or as this uh, uh, Wikimedia Commons, as the blogs and all these uh, uh, things that we have worked, I have worked with before. So we have all the, all the scene frames. And we render, for example, the frame 21 or we plot all of them together so now we have one episode in one A4 sheet for example and when we, if we want to start uh, comparing, for example, these frames with each other to see what is, uh, which ones are alike in, the, in, 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 in one specific way. So we can say, for, we can, for example, uh, compare this frame So to make this, so you can do it in many ways, huh? So you can you can uh, do it by by looking at what they are saying. You can do it by what kind of RGB values. You can do it by what kind of contours you can contours they have. You can do it by what by the face, by the space. So this is this. I think this is. I hope that this is what you can see that that I'm talking about one image, one frame, and I'm, I'm looking at them in very very many different ways. 
and there's no one only way to look at this frame. So in this case, for example, I want to, if I look at these RGB values of a frame, so you have uh, one pixel has certain values, but these don't tell me anything about the structure of the frame. So it's telling me only about the colors. But if I want to know something about the structure, uh, we can do it as probably you did it already at class. We make a fast Fourier transformation. And this pixel that had this value, now it has this value. So this is just a graphic representation of, of, the, of the Fourier transform. So what we can do is, for example, if we have this kind of corridor-like, and then we compare it with, with this one. So we have a distance, whatever, over 100, 102. So it's, it's the distance between these two within these Fourier terms. But then, if now compare this 12 with, uh, with 15, with another frame, which is this one, that is kind of more, we can see that it's more, a little bit more similar. So we would expect that, so now it's this, against this. So we would expect that they're in structure, they're kind of similar because they have all these columns, they have all these panels on the back, the floor is kind of the same. So we would expect that the distance would be less than 102. And it's, uh, sorry, 1002, and now it's 103. Or if we compare, for example, this one, just last example, so this, uh, 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 just the, just the face, just a, a profile picture. If we compare it with uh, with the, with this one, the next with fourteen, for example. So we would expect to see a very short distance between them, less than 900 at least, so 870. So this just to show you how by th thinking about this, this, taking these frames and converting them to another space, and in this other space, comparing them, then we can turn back to the image and then start playing with them. So if we do this with, uh, with all the frames of this episode. So for, for this kind of comparison, I think uh, this is the part when, when this computer, this machine intelligence uh, starts playing because what is, what is it that you are comparing just numbers and large and, and one array that is very, very, very large and manually, of course, you cannot do it. So this is when this, uh, these algorithms play like a very great deal. And specifically here, so this self-organizing map, you have to talk about it, I think. And, but just to say one more time, what it is doing is it's taking all, the, the, all these values, all these images, and then creating a new space out of them. In this case, it's this one, let's say. It, the, rep the representation is not the same, but you have certain amount of numbers, certain amount of frames, and then you're creating something new. So when you project these things to this newness, the closest will appear next to each other. It's something like, uh, it's something like saying, for example, that you are, in, in, you are on Facebook even though you have never been on Facebook. So what does it mean if I tell you this? So this would mean that that Facebook has this space that is constructed by hundreds of, by, by billions of users. So there are billions of users, there are billions of numbers, and such space is constructed. And when you will, if you ever log on to Facebook, 
you will be immediately placed in this space. And then this is why immediately they tell you, these are your friends, these are your likes, you should go to this event, you should do this, you should do that. In a way you are there even though you are not there because people around you are there. <laughs> Something like this. So this is kind of very powerful. And then if we plot them again, so we, we plot all the frames. according to this new space, then you can see that these uh, profiles are close to each other, next to each other, these dark ones are next to each other, there are certain borders between, it, between them. And if you place a new image, if you bring a new image into this space, it will be placed within its similarities. Other thing that we can do with this, uh, now that we have these frames, so we can start recognizing places with very similar uh, type of algorithms. So this is, this is something uh, uh, done by, this is uh, called Pla Places365. So you import the work that somebody else already did. And then there is very well documented telling you how to do it, what kind of abilities you have with these uh, libraries. And basically what it does is takes an image and tells you where, uh, uh, what kind of place is there. So I think in mathematics it's one liner as well, no? That you can recognize, start recognizing faces, start recognizing objects. You can ask in one liner if it's outside, if it's inside. So it's a very similar story. So if we say, okay, this is, we have an image here what do you think is there? You say, okay, this is outdoors, this is a parking garage, this is an apartment, this is the embassy. So, not this far from it, but not it, but not this far of it. And then if we do the same for all the images, so here is a reception, it says, it's a, I think, it says, it, I think it's a reception, I think is a jail cell here. I think we don't like this, I think. I think it's an office, there, there are some office cubicles. I think there are, there's a corridor. It is actually kind of is, and so on. And, and now you take these frames and you start asking these questions to all of them you have a very clear category, you, 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 you place them in very clear categories. That is okay, let's say which one are in indoors, which one are outdoors, for example. And then uh, it says, okay, I found in this episode that there are 77 indoors and there are seven outdoors. Okay, plot the indoors ones. So very fast, we can start looking at one movie file in many different ways with many different frames. And similar with the, with the subtitles, if we take the subtitles of the episode, And then you look at certain scenes. You start, you look at the words, you start counting, you start putting a vocabulary together, and then you learn the topics within this vocabulary. And with a few lines, with a couple of ways to model this text, then you can uh, uh, ask questions, for example. I think you are doing this, something very similar with uh, 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 Professor Devlake's class and, and, and I call it Miro. So then you have hundreds of books. You start to look at, count the words. You start comparing them without reading them. And then you start writing about, what is it that you're writing about? Beauty or so. So buy the many, buy the plenty. So 
if you have if you if you have now this uh, episode one episode one movie and then you ask one question this okay can you tell me i have this document what do you have to say about it talking about azerbaijan oil soviet republic and then this is okay i think uh, i think these clips are relevant to your question so okay show me the clips and then you have uh, this automatic place of, of uh, surfing on this episode. So apparently they are talking about something similar. <coughs> okay. One, one, something else that I want to show you. So with, uh, about portraits. This. So then similarly, if you take all these frames and then you ask, you import the libraries, you, st uh, you put together a few lines of, of code and then you ask, is there a portrait there? Is there people there? Uh, yeah, there's these people this, in this frame, there's, this, there's, a, there's one face, there's another face this and with certain dimens dimensions and so on and so forth so then you say okay uh, print all the portraits so okay these are the frames with people <clears throat> so then now so we have been talking I have been talking only about one th one movie file so now imagine that you have uh, over 100 and you, you do exact, you do the same. So you discretize them, you, you uh, identify, you start, you, you say what kind of objects are there, if there are faces, what kind of places, and then you have hundreds of them, you have hundreds of thousands of frames, and you want to explore what is there without watching all these films. I want at once to see what's in these 100 films. So then here we can, we can see that uh, in these 100 films, there are some airplane cabins, there are catacombs, there are, there are hospitals, there are hot springs, and so on. So if we say, for example, sushi bar, It's okay. You're telling me that you have sushi bars and you show me the su su sushi bars. So this is from the movie I shot Andy Warhol, Fear and Nothing in Las Vegas, Paris, Texas, Blade Runner. And so on. So this, what, what I find interesting here is that this is a combination of many ways to look at the frames. So it's not based on one specific library that is looking for things or is identifying things, but it's me saying, okay, identify the image, the, the portraits, take them out of the equation. If there's very red, give me, give me all the very reds that have, that you think there's a sushi bar around. So then somehow you start to follow personal intuitions or personal interest within this uh, plenty of films. Finally, I think I want to show you uh, So this was, this was about this course, no? uh, this Balfach, and there the focus is more or less to get you used to, to, to the algorithms, to learn to tweak them, to learn to install things, 
to get just a little bit into this uh, level of talking to the computers or playing with the computers. What I am developing now, <coughs> it's something a little, bit, a little bit different because I am kind of giving these this, uh, panoramas. So I'm sharing this, I'm sharing all these frames, I'm sharing all these ways to look at it, all the already categorized things, I'm placing them in a very, uh, in very specific ways. So we can start talking about something as this, as a starting point. So I want to share panoramas that are built with hundreds of thousands of frames from hundreds of films. And I want to share the ways to move them around so we can start articulate, we, we can start art to try to articulate things from it. So this is why it's called our personal artifacts from this planting. So it, it is, is roughly divided in five. So then this part of this criticism that I've talked about already. So try to find uh, relevant frames, try to find relevant ways to cut one film. So for example, for example one, uh, uh, one film from one and a half hours film, post in the shell, we just cut it in 641 frames or every subtitles we cut it every time someone is saying something or every scene cut we cut it every time the camera is moving around or this combination of scene cut and subtitle scene cut and sub subtitle so one single movie looked at it in different ways so now that we have these different these different partitions, what kind of things we can do with them? So this is how what kind of ways to operate it. Characters, finding uh, portraits, which are just big faces, or or talking about stages. All these rooms in this film all these scenes that happen indoors with different elements or scapes, cityscapes, landscapes, Tokyo cityscape in Lost in Translation, for example. It's there. Or dialogues, which is already discretized as, you, as we saw. And we can learn, we can count the words and see what they're talking about and learn topics from it. So then imagine this from uh, 400 films now that the database is composed with. So, and then with this, within these 400, we build these panoramas and the limits of these panoramas are kind of in the performativity of your laptop. So you can say, I want panoramas from 10, movies from 100 movies from 200 movies we make this kind of foldable panoramas of for example uh, uh, these characters foldable because this is just uh, 9 by there's 81 little windows and if you take one you open it you see this kind of stuff you see what's inside a small part, another part, or panoramas of the uh, beach nest, for example. You say this blue, these ones that you think are outdoors. This is the whole panorama of 273 frames. And then you fold it to this 36. So you turn it around, you open it again. Here we look at 3-2, for example, so 3-2, this one with 9, we unfold it. Another part of the panorama. Uh, 
of this kind of corridorness with something corridor like with people, without people, with these kind of colors. Of city buildings. Of dialogues. So we say for example we, we would expect that fifty five it's talking about the same things as thirty one, only God forgives in Fight Club. Kind of makes sense. Or 24 and 21, very dissimilar. 24 Drive, 21 Dancer in the Dark. I would agree with that as well. So again, you have this plentiness and then you see more or less where we at. Navigation, so once you have the panoramas, you introduce new things, new frames, new questions, and then you place them within. So you have, for example, this image as a query, as a question, and then you say, where does it fit in one specific panorama, okay, it fits here. Can you show me a closer look? Yes. So these are, this is kind of, these movies. Or text. So this is a font query from a, a, the lyrics of a song. And it's about internet, beautiful eyes, strong uh, 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 sentiments. And then you say, okay, what do the films have to say? And then this is what the films have to say. I mean, this, I think you are more or less, uh, you have played with this idea a little bit. <clears throat> and finally, so then this, this, uh, this task, which I consider it like a stepping out of the panorama in the sense that uh, we will be talking about, we were supposed to develop a concept from this panorama because so a concept of, of uh, difference harmony love hate flirt so say okay we have all these things can we make something uh, uh, interesting in its own way around this kind of concepts and i think uh, mm, this is also a, a very nice a very interesting thing to explore because I think this can go at forever, no? So then these things on the online, on the communities are always coming. There are always new posts. There are always new things. There are computers are getting more powerful. There are many different algorithms and you can tweak them. You can do like this and then you can go, uh, you can go around it. Yeah, for a very long time. So I think it's also, it would be also important to explore the moment when from this abundance and with this from this plentiness we start to address uh, uh, complicated questions we start to address a projection a, a project for example and then i think this is one step uh, one step towards that stepping out of this plentiness and start to see what things can we articulate from them and <clears throat> finally, oh, it was short. Uh, finally, I want to show you something interesting slash funny. So, um, so we're in a school of architecture, and I and we, we we kind of believe that this is relevant to our tradition. This new setup with this, so this is relevant. But, uh, and then we want to learn, I want to learn how to make it, how to, how relevant it will be. And then if you ask around to the masters, what do they think about it? So we can learn from them. And then I will just, I think this is interesting for you to probably to check it out later, no? So you have prominent architect, and he's in this uh, clip, the Biennale 2016, two years old, two years ago, he's asked, what does he think about this? You can check it out later. And then he says, yeah, yeah, it's super impressive. 
So all these uh, data centers from Facebook, all these uh, Tesla, all this Amazon, all this technology. But what is really interesting is uh, how they are changing the landscape in the rural areas. So he's an infrastructure guy, hardcore. And then when he's asked about the dig digital infrastructure and what kind of new abilities and how it will influence architecture, then he says, yeah, let's look at what we are building at the footprint, which is kind of okay, I guess, but somehow feels like uh, the, the promise is bigger than this. The promise is bigger than reflecting on the, la on the change of the landscape or the promise is bigger than reflecting on what kind of styles, new, new, new uh, uh, typologies emerge from these data centers, for example. Or then you ask, uh, stop here. And then you ask to someone who loves computers as well, Patrick Schumacher, and then this is with his students, a round table, and the, the question is very specific, is AI kind of killing the profession of the architect? Is all this, uh, uh, this way to make things automatic, all these floor plans automatic, all these generative things? So are they kind of pushing the architect out? It's kind of killing our tradition? And then he says, of course not, that's stupid. I can agree with this. He says, we have to embrace artificial intelligence. But then he says, by the way, my new book, Parametrism 2.0, is reflecting on what I have done for the last 10 years. So somehow he sees that there's something there as well, but he seems to be not interested in it. So he kind of has his own agenda still, which is okay. You can check it out later as well. Or you ask characters like this, and he says, no, no, but, uh, but this, this is real. This is already here and it has a style. He says, all this big data, all this machine learning, as he calls it, as he calls it, he says, yeah, it it's, it's exists, it influences architecture and it's already happening. So he says, you can see it with uh, voxelizing algorithms. So this is about, this is the style of big data. If the style of parametricism was blind. The style of big data are voxels. And they just, just say, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> so he's, he's a prominent figure. These people are prominent figures. I mean, they are respected. They practice, some of them practice. They teach everything. But it seems like uh, we are trying, we're in the same boat, you and I, you and all of us. So we are trying to figure out what will, if this is really relevant and how much it will influence the tradition. And then here, for example, at the chair, at the chair at the department, there are many colleagues that kind of also celebrate uh, computers and architecture somehow. They like this kind of, but, uh, but somehow the discourse feels at the level of uh, smartness of efficiency, of sustainability, and uh, it's okay. But then if you look at your studios, for example, I'm not sure if one studio is a bad, if one of if your studios are being evaluated by these concepts. <laughs> I'm not sure that you, your studio professors, if you come and say, this project is very efficient, is very optimized, I'm not sure you will pass. <laughs> so. I think, uh, and I hope this is what, what uh, I can leave here. Uh, I think it goes beyond this. It goes beyond these concepts. And this is for, yeah, for us to, to figure out how much or not. Okay, okay this, is, this is it from my side. Thank you for listening.